In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Virtual Boy games up and running on a Wii U using RetroArch. The Virtual Boy is Nintendo's worst selling system of all time. That being said, the system laid the groundwork for a lot of Nintendo's interest in 3D gaming that would be fully realized with the 3DS. Sadly, Virtual Boy has never really been re-released on anything, so it has come down to emulation for us to keep this system alive and moving forward into current generations. And today I'm going to show you how to get Virtual Boy running on Nintendo's next worst performing system, the Wii U, and the irony of this situation is not lost on me. So let's dive in. To get started with Virtual Boy emulation, we need Virtual Boy games. Now, there are hardware dumpers to dump your own physical collection of Virtual Boy games. Otherwise, search the shady parts of the net. As always, no download links will be provided because that is illegal, so just stop. Anyways, once you've sourced your Virtual Boy games, we just need to put them onto our Wii U SD card. So on my Wii U SD card, I made a folder named RetroArch ROMs, and that's what I've been using throughout this tutorial series. So this is where I'm going to put my games. You can put your games anywhere you want on the SD card. It doesn't matter. I just like to have all of mine consolidated into a single folder. So I'm just going to drag my Virtual Boy games onto the SD card. And there we go. And once you have your games placed, you can pop the SD card out of your computer and put it back into the Wii U and get it booted up. Now, just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my RetroArch Wii U install video, so please refer back to that video for RetroArch installation initial settings, and how to install a forwarder channel like you see here on my Wii U home screen. But now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and boot into RetroArch, and you can do this either through the homebrew launcher or a RetroArch forwarder channel. Once RetroArch is booted, we can begin loading up Virtual Boy games, and to do so we could go down to Load Core, scroll down to the Nintendo section, press right on your D-pad to make it go quicker, and we are looking for... Beetle VB. So here we go, Nintendo Virtual Boy Beetle VB. So press A on this, it will load up the core. And once the core is loaded, go down to load content. And find your Virtual Boy game folder on your SD card. So click on SD. I put mine in RetroArch ROMs. Virtual Boy games. And I can begin loading up Virtual Boy games just by pressing A on them. I personally don't care for this method, it's really long and slow, so instead what I like to do is actually create a games playlist, and I could do so by going back out to the main menu, press left to go to the sidebar here, go down to import content, and from here we will do a manual scan. Content directory, choose your Virtual Boy game folder, so for me again it was in the SD card, RetroArch ROMs, Virtual Boy games, scan this directory. System name, I'm going to press right on the D-pad to go down to Nintendo and find Virtual Boy. There it is. And then for default core, same thing, right on the D-pad to go down to Nintendo and then find Virtual Boy Beetle VB. Now from here, make sure Scan Recursively is on if you have your games separated by folders. And then if you have them zipped, make sure Scan Inside Archives is enabled. Once you have your options set the way you need them, go down to Start Scan. And once the scan's completed, you will have a new Virtual Boy playlist entry down here on the bottom left. And from here, we can go ahead and select a Virtual Boy game and tell it to run. And there we go, Virtual Boy games up and running on a Nintendo Wii U. How absurd is this and here we go virtual boy games running really well on a nintendo wii u now i have to say this is very difficult just because it is expecting a 3d display and there isn't one on the wii u so this is actually really tough to play games like mario tennis you just really got to have the timing down so for those of you looking to get Virtual Boy games up and running on a Nintendo Wii U, that is the process. Not much to this one at all. Just get your Virtual Boy games, put them on your Wii U SD card, and load them up. But let's cover some of the core options that are available within the Beetle VB core. There's not a whole lot here, so this won't take very long. Pressing the home button on our Wii U gamepad, we can bring up the RetroArch quick menu, and from here we can scroll down to the options menu. And our first option is a 3D mode, so if you have a 3D capable display, the Wii U wasn't able to output 3D as far as I can recall, but if you have a 3D capable display, you can actually choose a number of 3D modes and implement the 3D effect of your display to get a 3D image out of it. 
If you don't have a 3D capable display, you can use Anaglyph, and this is like those old red and blue glasses that used to be really popular for a lot of things back in the early 80s, 90s. But you can also use those to get a 3D image out of Virtual Boy on a Wii U. Next is the Anaglyph preset, so if you happen to have a set of Anaglyph glasses lying around, you can choose the colors that they are so you can get 3D effects out of Virtual Boy games. So I imagine the most common are still red and blue. But once you select the option, you'll see that it ghosts the image, that way you can have a 3D uh, picture when you wear the glasses. Our next option is to change the color palette. Virtual Boy games are an eye bleeding red and black, and I'm personally not a fan of it, so thankfully we can change this to something quite a bit more easy on the eyes. Personally, I just prefer to put my Virtual Boy games in black and white. Our next option is to map the right analog stick to the right D-pad. So you can uh, enable this, you can also invert the X, Y axis or both of them at once. But I like to leave that one on. Now the last option available to us is CPU emulation and we can choose between accurate and fast. The Wii U seems to be capable of running the entire Virtual Boy library at full speed so there's no reason to turn this off of accurate. But that's going to do it as far as core options are concerned. So once you have these all set the way you like or if you need to set things per game, you can save game override options here at the top of the options screen, or if you just want to save an override for the entire core, you could do so in the overrides tab here. Now normally in this part of the video I'd start talking about shaders, but Wii U shaders are very weird to do and interesting, so I'm going to do a dedicated shaders video after I finish all of the core videos. So stay tuned for that. But that's going to do it as far as Virtual Boy emulation on the Wii U is concerned. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me about them in the comment section below, and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor and be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live. Really goes a long way to helping out the channel, and I am so grateful to all of you for that. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can always hit that join button here on YouTube or check out my Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place running and I am just so grateful to all of you for that. But that's going to do it for this one, so until next time my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.